welcome to lecture 5 of module 2 on heat transfer. This lecture will continue uh, our previous discussions on extended surface heat transfer. In the previous discussions what we have seen that why we need that extended surface heat transfer and then for different cases we have developed uh, a generalized equation for temperature profile for a uh, fin with constant area of heat transfer, uh, conduction heat transfer area and then we have seen that how the generalized temperature uh, equation uh, can be uh, uh, reduced to a specific form depending upon uh, three different boundary conditions that we have uh, sorry three different cases and in both the in all the three cases we have uh, uh, different boundary conditions that have been applied and also we have seen uh, how to find out the efficiency uh, 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 for uh, the fins. Okay. Now, we will carry on that discussion and we will try to see that uh, how uh, are the efficiency expressions for the different cases that we have discussed in case of fins and then later on we will take up a problem on this. Okay. So, to carry on the discussion and in the first case, case 1 we had as we have so case 1 we have already discussed and uh, this is the case when uh, the fin is infinitely long and for uh, that situation we have found out that temperature profile happens to be like this uh, T naught T bar by T naught bar equals to e to the power minus m x and for this kind of uh, situations we know that if we uh, uh, also we have seen in case of uh, 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 fin heat transfer that efficiency expression is like this uh, it is minus k into a into d t by d x at x is equal to 0 okay? and this is d t bar by d x at x equal to 0 divided by h into a t into uh, t 0 bar and this uh, uh, here. So, if we try to see that uh, uh, from this expression uh, if we find out what is d t by d x. So, d t bar by d x at x equal to 0 this is equal to uh, minus m t bar is 0. Okay? And if we put this here then it becomes uh, minus minus cancel. So, k into m into uh, a okay, um, into t bar 0 divided by uh, h into. Now, what is this a t? a t if we go back to our previous discussions we will see that uh, a t is that uh, b this area plus the surface area of this. So, if this is l l into uh, this is the l l into uh, uh, say b you can say this is the surface area and in the bottom also we will be having similar surface area and 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 here also this. So, you can say that if this is the perimeter p into this length p into l will be the surface area of this side and the bottom side and this will be the surface area extra that is b into h. Then uh, this will be h into uh, that a, a t will be equal to the total perimeter total perimeter is p into l length plus b into h okay, that will be the total area into t naught bar. And we know that m is equal to oh, we have seen we have already uh, decided that m is equal to root over h p by k into a. So, then it becomes actually uh, if we substitute this value of m over here we will get root over of uh, h p k into a divided by what we will do we will assume that uh, and also it is very practical in case of long uh, uh, fin that b h this area will be much much less compared to b l. 
So, therefore, we will write at we will simplify it to be h into p l. Okay. So, if we write like that, we can also get write it as k a root over of k a by root over of p l into 1 by l sorry. So, this is equal to root over of k a by root over of h into p into 1 by l and we know that root over h p by k l is equal to m. So, we can write as 1 by m into l that means what for a long uh, scene the efficiency is 1 by m into l and this we understand as we understand that if l tends to infinity that indicates that eta efficiency is tending to 0. So, that is what I was telling that uh, uh, because of this reason infinitely long uh, uh, fins has got no practical relevance in the thing in the point of view there is no efficiency efficiency is getting 0 and second point of this from fabrication point of view for a long very long uh, 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 fins where are you going to fit it where are you going to accommodate it. So, that is not a practical solution. So, but anyway, but for case 1 that efficiency expression is becoming 1 by m l. Now, if we go for case 2, okay. in case of case 2 t bar already we have seen that t uh, as we have seen in previously t bar by t naught bar and that is equal to cos hyperbolic m into l minus x plus h by m k into sin hyperbolic m into l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m into l. Okay. Now, d t by d x bar by d x at x is equal to 0 in this case is equal to minus m t naught bar into sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. Okay. Then, uh, uh, eta efficiency is again uh, as we have seen uh, our previous case it will become root over of h p k a by h of h into p l plus b h okay, into this uh, sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. Okay. Now, if we neglect again uh, in certain situations we may uh, neglect this and if we neglect b uh, h uh, 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 if b h is less than uh, p l then we can uh, write it again as uh, 1 by m l into as we have seen in the previous cases that uh, uh, this one is equal to 1 by m l h p l is, is equal to this one is equal to 1 by m l. So, it will be 1 by m l into this part. So, there is a factor that is coming for this case which is sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. Okay. So, this we can see that with respect to the previous case here there is a factor that is come into oh, picture when you have a uh, case of uh, that a finite length of the fin is considered. Okay. Now, coming to case 3, 
when the uh, tip is insulated in that case we have already find out the temperature profile as T bar by T naught bar and that is equal to cos hyperbolic sorry m into L minus x divided by cos hyperbolic m into L that is what we have got. Now, if we again uh, find out uh, that eta uh, if we try to find out so then we have to find out d t bar by d x at x is equal to 0 that for finding out the actual heat transfer at x equal to 0 then it is becoming minus m sin hyperbolic m l by cos hyperbolic m l into t naught bar. So, that says that if you put again that eta f this is equal to again uh, root over of h p k a by h into p l plus b h okay, and then tan hyperbolic m l and again in the same uh, 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 assumption if we take that if b into a is the product is uh, uh, less than p l then we can write eta f is equal to uh, uh, tan hyperbolic m l by m l. So, that becomes the efficiency for the case 3 and in all these uh, cases we can say that that the area of heat transfer by the fin at the tip where which is equal to the uh, uh, breadth of the fin into the thickness of the fin and in most of the situations the thickness of the fins are in the millimeters and then uh, the total area with respect to the, the, the total area that p into l uh, that main area of heat exchange by the fin happens to be much much higher compared to uh, this area b into h. So, it becomes a practical uh, uh, assumption uh, engineering assumption that b h is uh, much much less compared to p l. So, b h is taken to be negligible or taken to be uh, assumed to be 0. Okay. Under that situation we have found out how what happens to the efficiency terms. Now, whatever we have seen as of now is that three efficiency terms we have found out three efficiency expressions we have found out for three different cases and whatever we have found out in all the cases we have found we have seen that heat conduction area for the fin that was constant it is never changing. But as we have shown you uh, in previously in previous lecture uh, there are different types of uh, 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 fin we have shown and in many a situation we have seen there can be a variable area for the fins and when there is a variable every area of the fin is involved then this derivation does not work out then we have because while der deriving this we have taken area to be constant, but that area is a function of x. So, we have to take into consideration the fun area as a function of x and then we have to go for the uh, derivation and then it looks to be a little bit more complicated. So, for the time being we are not discussing about that complication and not going for that derivations students interested in doing this they can he can always find out in that case he has to do that area as a function of uh, uh, x he has to find out it can be a linear function, but particularly when there is a trapezoidal kind of things when there is a conical end it can be a linear function, but when there is a parabolic profile is there then it need not be a linear function the area need not be a linearly decreasing with respect to x and then the student has to be little bit cautious about that. So, therefore, we just wanted to restrict ourselves to the simplest situation where that area of heat conduction through the fin is remaining more or less constant is not changing uh, as we go along the length of the uh, uh, length of the fin. Okay. Now, uh, we will take off a problem on this fin heat transfer and we will see that uh, how it work out. So, let us uh, start the problem. Problem 1 it says a carbon steel carbon steel pipe the outside diameter O D is equal to 60 millimeter has 8 
longitudinal fins of thickness one point six millimeter. Okay. The fin the fins extends sorry the fins extend the fins extend 4 centimeter from the pipe wall okay thermal conductivity thermal conductivity of film material of the film material is 50 watt per meter per kelvin. Okay. The pipe surface temperature is Hundred degree centigrade. Ambient temperature is thirty degree centigrade, and heat transfer coefficient is, and the heat transfer. is a uh, hundred we have to calculate the percentage increase calculate the percentage increase or uh, in the rate of heat transfer for the as well as the percentage fin effectiveness for the fin tube over the plane tube. Okay. So, this is the problem description it says it says that there is a carbon steel and uh, carbon steel pipe and this pipe has got 8 longitudinal fins and they are of thickness 1.6 millimeter and the fin extends 4 centimeter. Okay. And that necessary um, uh, information like thermal conductivity, the temperatures, heat transfer coefficients are given. So, we have to find out what would be the uh, feed efficiency and what would be the heat transfer and all this. So, if we just try to see that it is like this. So, we have a pipe okay, and say this is the longitudinal fin that is being there okay and say this is the center line okay so there are like this way there are uh, eight so if i take uh, a front sorry a top view of this it will look like this okay so there will be like this there will be some 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 something like that so, there will be 8, 1, 2, I am sorry, uh, it, it will be like this, there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. 
So, this 8 fins are there at, at different sizes and uh, this, this value has been given as uh, 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 diameter is this. So, 0 0.3 centimeter and this portion has been given as 4 centimeter. Okay? So, like this way there are 8 fins okay, that is there uh, uh, which are uh, longitudinal fins are there. Okay, fine. Now, if you try to see that aim, how to tackle the problem, how to find out the values of efficiency first and to find out the efficiency, uh, we need to know first uh, uh, which conditions we have to use. This is a case uh, uh, straightforward is a uh, case 2. That means, fin is of definite length, fin is of definite length and there is the tip is not insulated. Under that situation, if you try to calculate the efficiency of the fin, the efficiency of the fin is eta is equal to 1 by m l sin hyperbolic m l plus h by m k cos hyperbolic m l then cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l. So, that means, we have to calculate the value of uh, m l and we have to calculate the value of m k h by m k. Now, h by m k is nothing but we know h is equal to 100 okay? and m is uh, that we have to calculate. Uh, so, if we see that uh, m is equal to root over of h p by k into area, okay? uh, h p by k into area. So, this is that uh, equal to h into root over of h into the p is equal to uh, 2 into p is equal to actually b plus h as we have seen in the previous diagram we have seen that the blade plus thickness that is this is the p uh, perimeter is this this is the perimeter and this is b sorry yeah this is b this is b this is h and this is h so 2 into b plus h is the uh, perimeter and divided by k into area now if we say that uh, h is relatively as we know is smaller than b because we know that h is equal to 1.6 millimeter uh, being given h is equal to so uh, if we consider that perimeter uh, like this uh, this is say b this is b this is h and this is h b is that uh, that uh, breadth uh, like the length of the uh, pipe and h h is the thickness so we know that uh, b plus b plus h plus h is the perimeter and in general we know that h is the thickness and which is much much less uh, um, compared to the b values and therefore we can write that uh, 2 into b plus h we can write nearly equal to 2 into b and therefore what we can get is from here h into 2 into b divided by we have k into and area is equal to b into h. Okay. So, so the b b cancels. So, we can get and this is equal to uh, root over of twice h by k into h. Okay. Now, uh, this is equal to m. So, m l is equal to sorry I will write here. So, m l uh, m l is equal to then root over of twice h by k h into l and in this problem uh, this value is all this value is given uh, h is equal to 100 k is 50 and h we know 0 0.0016 uh, 
Okay. So, this is root over of 2 into 100 by k is equal to 50 into h is equal to 0 0.0016 into l is equal to we have uh, 0 0.04 this is length this is l. So, then we can we will get the value of uh, m l is equal to 2 we get the value of m l is equal to 2 and then and also we get the value of m is equal to uh, value of m also we get if we put this way we get the value of m is equal to 50. So, then h by m k is becoming 50 into m is equal to 50 into k is equal to another 50. Okay. Then this value is becoming uh, again 0 0.04. So, h by m k is becoming 0 0.04. Now, if you put the value of uh, all this here m l is equal to 2 uh, h by m k is equal to 0 0.04. So, eta value is becoming uh, 1 by uh, 2 into uh, sin hyperbolic 2 plus uh, 0 0.04 cos hyperbolic 2 by cos hyperbolic 2 plus 0 0.04 sin hyperbolic 2 and then this value is coming to be 0 0.483. So, efficiency uh, when we consider in case 2 situation the efficiency is becoming 0 0.483. Incidentally also that if we consider even the case 3 uh, here case 3 means that tip is insulated that means there is no heat transfer from the tip which is merely equal to assuming the heat transfer area negligible because if we assume that b into h is very small if we assume that uh, this heat transfer area is very small for the heat transfer which is that means the less uh, uh, heat transferred through the tip will be almost uh, 0 which is equivalent to the case assuming that t is uh, insulated. So, that way if we uh, if we apply uh, case 3 to find out um, uh, efficiency, we will find that uh, efficiency expression if we apply that is eta is equal to uh, tan hyperbolic m l by m l and we have seen the values that it is equal to tan hyperbolic m l is equal to 2 by 2 and this value is 0 0.48. So, we see that previous case the efficiency is marginally more we have seen that in the previous case the efficiency was uh, uh, 0 0.483 and now in present situation it is 0 0.48 only. So, there is a, a very small difference in the efficiency and which is 0 0.003 only this is my difference in the efficiencies obtained. So, this is almost negligible therefore, either of case 2 or of case 3 can be used for this kind of uh, analysis because the tip area this it depends upon the thickness of the fin because the tip area fin area is almost negligible and so heat transfer through this is almost negligible. So, case 2 and case 3 are almost coinciding with each other. Okay. Now, after we find out the efficiency then we have to find out the heat transfer uh, we have to find out. So, for uh, uh, tube without fin. So, heat transfer rate okay, heat transfer rate uh, uh, if we try to calculate for that we have to find out that area of bare tube or uh, according to the problem uh, this is the pi plus pi. So, heat area of the bare tube or pi and that uh, that is equal to you know oh pi d in naught into in the into the l of the uh, small l l length of the uh, uh, pipe. Okay and uh, if we this will become now 
this will become now pi into 0 0.06 is the outer diameter into say 1, 1 is the per unit meter length. So, that we are assuming the length is equal to 1 meter, okay? this much meter square, we are assuming uh, L is equal to 1 meter length of the pi. So, then it is becoming uh, 0 0.1885 meter square okay? and then heat transfer rate uh, uh, rate E is equal to uh, H into uh, area of the bare pipe into delta T and this is equal to H is 100 and area of the bare pipe is, in, is equal to 0 0.1885 into delta T is equal to 170. So, this becoming 3.205 kilowatt. So, this is the heat transfer rate by the, uh, the heat transfer rate by the uh, uh, pipe when there is no fin associated with it. Now, if we try to find out the fin area, area of the fin, fins uh, transferring heat, if we try to see, uh, here we will get that uh, 2 into 1 into 0 0.04. This is the, uh, if we go back to our this thing, we will see that we have taken this one to be 1 meter, we have taken this one to be 1 meter. So, 1 into 0 0.4 that is the area and it is in both sides, heat is transferred from both the sides. So, then it becomes 2 into 1 into 0 0.04 this many meter square this plus uh, uh, plus the area of the tip and if we neglect the area of the tip. So, this is becoming actually 0 0.08 meter and if we try to see that area of tip for each case is equal to 0 0.0016 into 1 that means 0 0.0016 meter square. So, we can see that that area of the teeth is very small compared to the total area. Therefore, we can uh, uh, simply neglect uh, that area and then uh, for 8 fins the area is 8 into 0 0.0 sorry 0 0.08 meter square and that is equal to 0 0.64 meter square. This is the area of the fins that is transferring heat and then we have to find out the area which is not occupied uh, by the fin and that area of bare area of the pipe which is not occupied by the fin that is also uh, responsible for heat transfer. So, that amount will be, so uh, bare area of pipe of fin pipe, this will be equal to 0. Point, uh, I am sorry, uh, 0. Point, yeah, we have seen uh, 1885, this is the uh, area of the total pipe minus, this is the area occupied by, uh, by one fin, there will be 8 fins, so minus 8 into 0. 0.0016 and then it becomes uh, 0 0.1757 meter square. So, total area heat exchange area of the fin pipe and that is equal to 0 0.64 plus 0 0.1757 and that is equal to 0 0.8157 meter square. Okay. Now, we have found out the area of this fin pipe. So, heat, heat transferred by the fin pipe, heat transfer rate 
by the fin pipe is now efficiency of the fin we have found out. So, 0 0.48 into uh, the area of the fin is uh, 0 0.64 into uh, uh, 170 is the driving force delta t into uh, um, uh, h is 100. So, this is actually uh, we should write this will be heat transfer uh, coefficient into area of the fin into driving force into eta f. So, this eta f efficiency of the fin is 0.48, then uh, uh, heat transfer area is equal to 0 0.64, then driving force is uh, delta t is this and h is equal to 100. This plus this is the from the fin part and from the Un, uh, unoccupied part of the uh, pipe and that is equal to say h again into a uh, uh, pipe into delta t and that is plus we will have h is equal to again 100 into area of the pipe here is, is just we have seen 0 0.1757 into 170 this area is the area of the pipe surface area of the pipe minus the portions which are occupied by the fins. So, then it becomes actually 8.209 kilowatt. So, we have seen when the pipe was not finned then that heat transfer was 3.205 kilowatt and now we have found that heat transfer rate is 8.209 kilowatt. Therefore, so, change percentage increase equals to 8.209 minus 3.205 by 3.205 into 100. So, this is equal to 156.13 percent. So, we can see that it is 156 times this many percentage. 156 percentage increase in the heat transfer rate is there when the this kind of fin is there. And effectiveness is percentage effectiveness equals to 8.209 that heat transfer just with fin divided by 3.205 into 100 and this is nearly equal to 256.13 percentage. So, effectiveness is 256 percent and percentage increase in heat transfer rate is uh, uh, 156.13 percentage. So, this uh, uh, gives an idea uh, that how fin helps us to increase the rate of heat transfer. This problem will help us uh, to understand that. Now, one thing I should one thing I should clear here in case of uh, circumferential fins or radial fins uh, the area of conductive heat exchange that changes uh, uh, and that varies and in that situation this kind of uh, uh, analysis uh, will not be working to find out the values of ML and efficiency. So, what is being done in that case is uh, there are uh, certain uh, charts are available to find out the values of efficiency for circumferential fins and or radial fins. Some charts are available and these charts are basically with respect to uh, uh, fin efficiency versus uh, an expression that is h by k into a m whole to the power half into l to the power 3 by 2, where a m is called profile area, h is heat transfer coefficient, k is uh, thermal conductivity of the fin material and a m is called profile area and this is equal to L into h, okay. the length of the fin into h, uh, thickness of the fin and L is the length of the fin. In some situations it may happen that uh, 
uh, that L is replaced by L is replaced by L c that is corrected length fin length. Then uh, mm, in that case uh, uh, the efficiency if the plot is efficiency versus h by k into a m whole to the power half into l c to the power 3 by 2 and l c is equal to l plus h by 2 and l c is equal to l plus d by 4 this is for rectangular profile and this is for uh, uh, fin pin fins pin fins means uh, this is a circular rod and d is the diameter of the rod fin rod okay so this way we find out the from the chart we can find out the values of uh, efficiency for uh, uh, for fins uh, which has got a variable area and then once we know the efficiency then rest of the parties the actual heat transfer we can calculate that actual already we have seen through this problem also actual heat transfer rate that is equal to that uh, efficiency of the fin into a, a hit H A into T naught bar. So, A is the total area of heat transfer, H is the convective heat transfer coefficient and T bar is the uh, driving force delta T. Okay. From this, we can find out uh, that uh, actual heat transfer rate by the fins by the fins okay, that has uh, uh, got variable conductive surface area. Okay. Now, uh, this way we try to explain uh, to some extent on the uh, 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 extended surface area and uh, how the heat transfer takes place through the fins and how the temperature profiles are there, how are the efficiencies, what is the effectiveness of the fin etcetera we have discussed. Now, one specific topic I just wanted to tell here is that is called thermal contact resistance. Thermal contact resistance now from the name itself we can understand like here uh, we can see that when two bodies come in physical contact A and B they are coming in physical contact okay, then what may happen there can be some extra resistance encountered uh, at this contact point. If you see that this is a uh, just magnification of this is being shown here and once you see this that uh, there is basically some kind of roughness always there in any surface there is a some roughness when these two surface joins with each other then there will be a some empty space that is being developed and this empty spaces are being occupied by some gases it may be air it may be some other gases the empty spaces are occupied so what happens when the heat is being transferred say from a to b when the heat is being transferred in this direction from a to b what is going to happen is that part of this is going through the direct contact of the solids and in some places there is no contact directly by the solids the contact is by the gas phase inside these between the solids. So, part of this is by the direct contact between solids A and B and part of the transport is taking place through the gas or air which is entrapped in the void space. Okay. Now, we understand or we know that thermal conductivity of the gas or air is very low compared to the solids 
and then therefore what happens as because the as because it is expected that the whole thing should have been the solid contact but as because it is not the case then what happens there is a an extra resistance that is being developed and therefore we'll find that there is a drop in temperature uh, uh, in this uh, contact zone between these two bodies and this is called uh, this drop in temperature is happening due to the resistance being offered by the fluid entered into this place and therefore it's called thermal contact resistance and if we see that that if we draw a profile of the temperature we will find the suppose the suppose this is as we have seen that this is a and this is b and if we draw the profile here we will see so heat transfer is taking place from a to b so here the heat transfer is taking place so now this is these are the two temperature profiles this is a temperature profile so they say say this is t1 so this is t2 a this is t2 b and this is say t3 so what is happening from t1 to t2 a there is a profile change there is a profile this is this is depending upon the thermal conductivity of a between uh, uh, t2 b to t3 again there is another profile this is depending upon the thermal conductivity of the b but at this junction itself there is a drop from t2 a to t2 b and this drop is basically due to the resistance being offered due to the presence of some gases entrapped in the void space that is being created uh, while they are in contact and that is being created due to the non smoothness of the surfaces or rather roughness of the surfaces. Now, this can be much easily understood if, if, if we increase the external pressure here or in the other way other way around if we decrease the pressure here then what will happen if we de decrease the pressure of the surrounding then the uh, pressure of the fluid entrapped in this point uh, in this thermal contact region will be reduced. So, the number of molecules of the entrapped molecules will be reduced and when the number of molecules entrapped is reduced then what will happen thermal conductivity will be further reduced and that situation the uh, drop will be further more. Okay. So, resistance will increase. So, resistance will increase with decrease in with decrease in surrounding pressure that is one case other case is that if we apply if we apply some kind of pressure at this junction at this junction so that some kind of deformation takes place here at this junction the application of some kind of pressure then what will happen that if the deformation surface deformation takes place then thus if we can bring about more smoothness on the surface then that voidness will be reduced. So, amount of gas entered into the material will be reduced and then thermal contact resistance will be reduced. That means, what we say is that uh, if we uh, increase uh, the joint pressure by some means uh, resistance will, will decrease with increased joint pressure. This is what we, if we put some kind of pressure at the joint between these two body then what will happen uh, the uh, they will there will be more contact and because of more contact less area for the uh, air or gases to be entrapped. So, less conduction by the uh, airy material more conduction by the solid material and therefore, the thermal contact resistance will decrease and uh, in some in many situations uh, these thermal contact resistance are reduced by putting some greasy material uh, 
at this junction point, if you put some greasy material, we can reduce the thermal contact resistance. Okay. So, well, this way uh, we have uh, tried to see that uh, in case of uh, steady state uh, heat conduction situation, particularly in one dimension, what happens uh, uh, when there is a uh, the, the, the cylindrical surface, when there is a plane wall, when there is a spherical wall, when there is a spherical body, when there is an extension uh, of the surface areas by extended surface system in the by uh, uh, applying fins and then also we try to see that what is the uh, physical significance of thermal contact resistances uh, uh, in case of heat transfer. Now, uh, in the uh, next uh, lecture onwards, we will discuss uh, on unsteady state heat transfer, we will see that how uh, or what will be the situation, how are the performances when temperature changes with time, what happens to the heat transfer rate if it changes, if temperature changes with time, all these things we will discuss from next lecture onwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>